is bad. Believe it or not, I've never actually used DaVinci Resolve. I've never even downloaded it. Final Cut is my main editor, so it's not that I haven't experimented with others. I used Premiere a long time ago. I learned a lot in Final Cut and I stuck with that. Enough with this bad drawing. What we're doing today is I'm going to test out DaVinci Resolve for the first time ever in my life. I've got some things I'm going to compare between the two. Now the first thing I have to do is actually download it onto my computer. So let's go ahead and get that. So there's two versions. There's a free version and then a paid version. So you already know what I had to get. Don't mind if I do. The first thing I'm going to test out is the keyframing. I'm going to see how the keyframes move, if you have any options to do with keyframes and, and stuff like that. Okay, so what's going on up here? So this is the full timeline, something like that maybe. Okay, so let's try and get to the keyframes. Aha, right here. So let's say we started off back here, right? Wait, wait what is this? Dynamic zoom. Okay, so you can add your own zooms that's built in. That's convenient, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the keyframing. Okay, so here I'll have it start off over here and then move left to right. So let's go to the end of the clip and then move it. Move the other way. So it looks like it's linear. That's the default uh, movement for the keyframes. Is there any way to change the type of movement? I feel like I'm about to make a lot of people that use DaVinci uh, pretty mad. I don't know if there's a way you can change the style from linear to something else. And that's what I'm having trouble with. All right, I'm gonna guess that that is the What is this? As far as keyframings go, by default, it's linear, and I'm not too sure how to change it from that, so I'm just gonna guess that that's the, that's the way it keyframes. On to Final Cut. So we're gonna start, once again, all the way to the left, and then we're gonna make it go all the way to the right. Wow, okay, this is very, uh, a lot more familiar. <laughs> definitely has a different motion as far as like that's not linear you see how it kind of speeds up in the middle and then slows down at the end now I do know that you can't change that directly inside Final Cut that's something that is pretty interesting again I'm new bear with me on the DaVinci I literally just downloaded it as you saw but yeah the next thing I'm going to test out is actually going to be stabilization. I'm going to see how well it is at stabilizing stuff without making it look all warped. I'm going to grab my phone and I'm just going to make a recording and shake my hands. All right, here we go. Whoa! Don't know what's going on here with the colors. It's something to do with the... I know what it is, but I don't know how to change it. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but... Stabilize. This is the stabilizing test. How it does. Let's see what it looks like stabilized. Stabilized. This is the stabilizing test. Let's see how it does. Okay, it I mean it's still a little bit warped. Well, yeah, it is warped. I guess we can see how it is on final cut. Stabilized. This is the stabilizing test. Let's see how it does. Okay, so it actually does look a lot better on final cut. Interesting. Stabilized. This is the stabilizing test. See how it does. Now the next thing I'm going to test is tracking. I'm gonna see how the tracking performs. Track my hand. Whoa. So, I got a quick rundown and here's where we're gonna go, right here. I guess this is where the big effects happen. Drag it into here. This is interesting. Click the clip. Tracking tracker And so we're gonna track my hand. Okay, so we got something going on here track forward, okay And then track backwards 
Okay, I'm gonna add a title here, and then I'm gonna put something really special. Drag this over to there. And then that should be tracked, I believe. Hold on. What am I doing wrong? Okay, so I moved it to the wrong spot. So let me redo that. I moved it here. It's supposed to go on the actual tracker itself. So you got this little area going on here. Click here and then match move. Now I'm wondering if you can add motion blur on top of that. Motion blur. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's actually pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty good. Testing the same thing out in Final Cut. Basic title. With this, I know you go here down the trackers and then you just put it over your hand. Uh, I know you can actually track to certain areas like this if you drag it over. So, and then you click analyze. That did it much faster. Get this, move it over here. There's no way or a button to just click to add motion blur to it, unlike DaVinci. So that feature is pretty nice, but built in, that's definitely a plus for DaVinci on this test. The next thing we're testing is going to be speed ramping, which I do all the time in editing, and that would be considered a necessity in a lot of edits, is speed ramping and making it look smooth and nice. All right, so I got the clip, and we're gonna be using this, oh wait, it's gonna download. Okay, it's downloaded. We're gonna use this drone shot going across this town, but how do you add a speed ramp? Okay, I got some more knowledge on this, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into this editor, and then we're going to click Retime Controls. Let's go to a point where we want it to speed up, let's say right about here. Okay, so we go here, and then we click this right here, and we click Add Speed Point, and then we go over, and then let's add another speed point. Make this really quick, right click, Retime curve. We can change that, and then that's how we can adjust the how smooth it is going into the speed ramp. So it's a little bit smoother than it was before. It it's not as abrupt. So that's pretty much how you do the speed ramp in DaVinci. Now, if we take that same clip and move it into Final Cut, you want to click Shift B, and then we go back to the other point, and then you want to grab this and move it all the way down and then make it more transitioning. You get that with the shortcuts and just how convenient that was, uh, moving the, the areas and stuff like that. This seems like it would be, you'd be able to complete it faster. For these last two, I'm actually gonna do Final Cut first and then go over to DaVinci uh, and just do it that way. And for this, we're gonna be looking at the basic masking and, and all of that. Oh, there it is. Oh. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna do a draw mask here. And so we're just gonna add some points around my hand. Go back up here. Duplicate that and then get rid of the mask on this one. So now we keyframe the mask. And then add, add something underneath. Oh, we're gonna feather it. There we go. And then you get the mask in Final Cut. Oh, here we go. All right, let's go to DaVinci where I will be learning how to mask. Let's add the clip once again in the col wrong color form. So I think we're going over here to this little button. Okay, right click and then, is it this? No, it's this. So I guess there's multiple ways to mask, but I will try this way. So there's this button in the color tab and then you can select and draw your own mask. So we have that masked out. And then if we go to the tracking window and then press. Tr 
Okay. Maybe if we move it around here. All right. So the tracking is not working. Okay. Now we're in here. Man, what in the world? Add tool. Transform. Never mind. We're back here again. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. So Alt S creates a new node, uh, whatever that is. I guess it's this thing. And then we're simply going to draw a cross. Now this is gonna be pretty simple because I already don't know what I'm doing. If we go to keyframe, click on the keyframes, and then we go frame by frame. Should get something like that. Nice and keyframed. Now, how do I soften this right here? That should, that should be it. Okay, and then we connect this here. And then we go back to the editing window. Leave, okay, so alt. And we grab the same. Why won't it let me add a picture? Interesting. So we're just gonna go with the title, I guess. I don't know. It won't let me drag in the picture for some reason. Man, that took a long time. Okay, so that is the, that's the, <laughs> a lot more complicated uh, than the Final Cut version, definitely. Last but not least, which is one of the things that Da Vinci is known for, is the fantastic color grading. That's going to be the last thing we're working on here. So I'm going to go ahead and find a clip log footage to test out and final cut, and then we'll move over to Da Vinci and see what we can do there. We're definitely not gonna be doing everything that usually happens. We're just gonna be doing the basic stuff because yeah, I've already taken long enough to figure out how to mask something. Okay, so here's what we're working with in final cut. I got this clip of this nice majestic eagle and we're going to color grade it. I wanna raise the highlights, lower the shadows, and then mid-tones can go down more if you need, and then maybe up the saturation a little bit. Hue and saturation curves, luma and saturation, and then bring this down, a warmer feel, and then the shadows. Okay, so that's, that's just, that's gonna be that. Nice, simple color grade, nothing too much, just kind of a basic. Correction. Now let's see how long it takes me to do that in Da Vinci. This is gonna be great. Oh, okay. I don't even know where to start. Add node, corrector, I guess. The wheels, which is right here. Okay, okay. How do I open up some vectors? All right, we're getting somewhere. Bring the shadows down to zero. The highlights can be brought up. Okay, so from what I'm seeing, you kind of just add nodes. And so you got a little tree here that you're adjusting. So I actually graded the last node here. It should be a different, oh my goodness. Saturation up. Let's add this uh, white balance here. Add some contrast. And then again, let's make it a little bit warmer. So there's that, that's the basic correction. And then this could be more for coloring. Change the tip. This is a lot, it's very in depth. A lot of stuff here. Well, there's that. How do I make this full screen? A basic, extremely basic color grade in DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, it's very professional. And there are, I don't even wanna know how many different settings. There's so many different things. A lot to learn, definitely, if I wanna start dabbling in this, but Final Cut does have a pretty smooth editing process and it is very enjoyable to work with and you can't disregard that, but this definitely has a better color grade. The tracking seemed pretty good. Now, the question is, will I completely ditch Final Cut and move over to this and learn this entirely? Uh, no, I'm gonna stay on Final Cut, at least for now, and I may come back here 
here and there and learn bits and pieces of it. But as far as what I use mainly, I'm going to stick with Final Cut as of right now. So subscribe and maybe in the future you'll see me mess with this a little bit more. But with that being said, I'll see you at the next edit. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna erase this.